Hi, I'm Megan Powell from the Essex Bridge Center. Today's lesson is the second in our series on the fundamentals of opening a weak preemptive hand. And then what happens at the table after that? Today's lesson will focus on responder to the preemptive opener. So let's get started. Before we get into the meat of our topic today, I'm going to remind you that we are showing you more information on the hand records we send you. Now, we, you've seen something like this before, and you have seen where the high card points are listed for you. What's new is this deep finesse analysis box. This will tell you what contracts could be made, but it does not suggest what you should bid. It will tell you how many tricks you could make in a contract in that area. And if you look at this box, you'll see that the players at the table are listed horizontally, north, south, east, west. And the area for contracts is vertical. No trump contracts, spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs. So for example, if you look at the east-west horizontal lines, you will see that in the heart column, East and West can take 11 tricks in hearts. They can make five hearts. Book plus five equals 11 tricks. That's what that means. Five, making five means how many tricks above book? Well, we don't usually bid five hearts. So probably what this is telling you that if we bid four hearts game, we could take one extra trick, 11 tricks. It is telling you we can take 11 tricks in hearts if we're east-west. But likewise, if you look at north and south in the spade column, north and south can only take eight tricks in spades, book plus two, eight tricks. What if they had been in four spades? They would have needed 10 tricks. They would have needed to make four, not two. They would be down two. So it is a way to tell you how many tricks you can take in any given contract and by which players. And we'll talk more about this deep finesse analysis box as we go along. So let's move to today's lesson. Today, we wanna to focus on some of the information we've already discussed in this series, an opener making a preemptive opening bid with a weak high card point count and a long suit. We wanna talk again about the opponent making a simple overcall penalty double or just passing in an auction. But the new information today will center around the responder to the preemptive opener. How will that player at the table bid? How will that player react to partner's weak opening hand? Now, before we get to the responder information, let's just lay the groundwork for the preemptive opening and overcall information that we've already discussed. What are the most important takeaways? Well, you need to remember that a preemptive opening weak bid is the first meaningful bid at, in this auction. It is possible that a player before you has passed, but has not made any kind of a suit or a no trump bid. Then you would not be making a preemptive opening. So it is the first bid other than pass in this auction. It is also made at a higher level than just the one level. It has to start at least the two level. And you're making preemptive openings when you have a weak high card point count and a long suit. And your main goals here, you're trying to stop the opponents who quite frankly are likely to have more high card points than you do if you are weak. You're trying to stop the opponents from finding their rightful place in the auction. You are not intending to make your preemptive contract. You don't intend to be successful. You intend to go down one or two, but that doesn't worry you because while you are probably going to get a negative score, you're hoping for a good negative score, a better score than you would have earned if you allowed the people on either side of you, your opponents, to find their best contract. They will hand you a bigger negative score if they are successful. Now, what about other pieces of preemptive openings? What are the specifics? What do you have to have in your hand? Five to nine high card points. 
you need a long suit with at least two of the top three honors or three of the top five honors in your long suit. In addition to your long suit, no matter what suit it is, you should not also have an additional four card major suit. Your hand is too strong to open as a weak preemptive opener. You should not have in the other three suits more than one ace or one king. You're allowed to have one of those high honors outside of your long suit, not more than one of those winning tricks. And vulnerability does matter. You, want, you can and should make a preemptive weak opening bid when you are not vulnerable. If you are vulnerable, then everybody at the table should be vulnerable. It should be an equal vulnerability. So make your preemptive opening bids when you are not vulnerable or when everybody's vulnerable, all right? Now, how do you make this preemptive opening bid? Well, if you have a long six card suit with those honors, you would open your preemptive opening bid at the two level, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades, not two clubs. We talk about two club openers in our mega hand series. If you had a seven card suit with your weak point count, you would open on the three level, three diamonds, three hearts, I'm sorry, three clubs, three diamonds, three hearts, three spades. If you had an eight card or longer suit, you would open immediately at the four level, four clubs, four diamonds, four hearts, four spades. You're being very brave here. But again, you are trying to stop the opponents from finding their best contract and getting into the auction. When they have a very good contract that they can make, they will earn a very large positive score. They will turn around and hand you the negative of that large score. So you'll earn a large negative score. You are expecting your contract not to make when you make a preempt. You are expecting to go down and get a negative score. But if you look at the defeated contracts list on that ACBL instant scorer sheet, you'll see that when you go down one or even down two, the negative score you earn is very, very small, especially in comparison to the huge negative score the opponents will hit you with when they make a very good contract. Now, we also talked in addition to opening requirements for preemptive bids, we also talked about what do the opponents do after you have made this preemptive opening? Can they get into the auction? We're trying to keep them out, right? So how would they get into the auction? Well, there are two major ways at this point in your bridge career. The first way is something called a simple overcall. If you made a preemptive weak opening bid on the two level, it means the opponent to your left, the next player to bid, could still bid a two level suit. It would be a two level simple overcall. They would have to have 10 to 16 high card points. They would have to have a five card or longer suit with at least one high honor in it. And they could get into the auction on the two level. But once you've made an opening on a preemptive opening on the three level, well, then for the opponent to try and squeeze into the auction, they're going to have to make their opponent bid on the three level, right? So they would have to have more in terms of high card points, more in terms of suit length and value. If an opponent wants to make a simple overcall on the three level after your preemptive, opening bid, that opponent needs the upper end of the overcall range, 14, 15, 16 high card points. They need a six card or longer suit. They need two or more high honors. Now they're always making a simple overcall as low as they can, as cheaply as they can. If they can still make their simple overcall on the two level, they should. They should only bid a three level simple overcall if the two level is no longer available to them. And then they have to have the three level requirements. Now, if they do not have a simple overcall, if they don't meet all the requirements for that, they might still make a meaningful bid as the opponents in this auction. And that meaningful bid could be a penalty double. That's when the opponents are basically turning to you after you've made a preemptive opening and saying, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. You cannot make your preemptive contract. You don't have enough points to take that many tricks. 
How does an opponent know that? Well, two things really need to be in place. First of all, your preemptive opening bid would have had to have been at the four level or higher, four clubs, four diamonds, four hearts, four spades. Your very first bid, your preemptive opening, all the way up on the four level. And the opponent is saying to himself or herself, they cannot take 10 tricks. How do they know that? Because their own hand, the opponent's hand, is sitting on a lot of high card points. If the opponent has at least 15 high card points, the opponent is saying to himself or herself, how can they take 10 tricks with that preemptive contract? I have 15 or more points. They don't have enough high card points to even take 10 tricks. So they will hit you with that red X card, the red X button, a penalty double. If they are guessing correctly and you cannot make your preemptive contract, then they will be rewarded with tons of extra positive points in the, in the scoring at the end of the hand. And yes, you will get larger than usual negative points. Now, the good news is if they've doubled you for penalty and you actually do make your preemptive contract, you are hit with tons of positive points. You get a lot of extra positive points because they insulted you with their penalty double. OK, so those are the two ways opponents have learned so far how to get into an auction after there has been a preemptive opening bid by an opponent. So now what we want to do is explore how a responder to the opener gets into the auction. Let's make sure we know who's who at the table. The player across from you at the table has opened a weak preemptive bid. The player to your right is an opponent. Now, they may have bid, they may not have bid. But now you're the third person to make a meaningful bid, perhaps. You are the responder to the weak preemptive opener across the table. Here's the thing. When we talk about this topic in particular, the responder piece, the truth is that there's a lot, a lot of information Preemptive weak bidding happens under a bunch of different scenarios in bridge, not just the narrow area that we've been talking about. And you don't even feel it's very narrow, right? You already feel there's a whole lot of information that you have to try and fit in your head somewhere. But believe me, it's not the end of it. In fact, we teach preemptive weak bidding at least three times over your first three years of bridge lessons. And each time we, we do teach it, we add a little bit more in terms of the parts that go together, in terms of the processes, in terms of the nuances. In the past, we've actually tried to teach all the pieces at once. And what it ends up meaning is that the players remember almost nothing. It's too much. So now what we do is we break it down. We teach a little bit in year one. We teach more in year two. We teach more in year three when it comes to weak preemptive conversations. So this lesson, it takes place in your first year of bridge, really, for many of you. Some of you may be revisiting this lesson, having played a little longer than one year, and that's perfectly fine. Believe me, the foundations are important. But since this is geared for people who are still in their first year of bridge, what we want to do is introduce the guts, if you will, the most fundamental pieces of how a responder reacts. When your partner across the table is already showing a weak weak point count when they've made a preemptive opening bid. We have to deal as responder differently. When your partner's already showing you weak, weak, weak points, you cannot go off the deep end with your bidding responder. You don't want the auction getting way too high too fast. You don't know yet exactly where you want to be until we put some rules into place. And basically, at this point, what we want to talk about is how does a responder surely help opener's weak hand? Now, what that's going to mean is that a responder who really will meaningfully help an, an opener's weak hand will either need a whole lot of points in the responding hand or a whole lot of cards to go with opener's preemptive long suit or both. And that's where we're going to start. That's where we're going to begin our responding work opposite a weak preemptive opener. Believe me, you're going to have a ton of what if, Megan, questions. Yeah, you can ask them. I'll try and answer them. But the truth is, 
To answer most of them, I will have to spend mm, 40 minutes setting the groundwork for it. And that's why we spread it out over time. Get the basics down first. Do the basics that happen most of the time successfully. And then later on, we'll add more pieces, okay? So your partner has opened a weak preemptive suit bid. Maybe partner opened two diamonds with a six-card diamond suit. Maybe opened three hearts with a seven-card heart suit. Maybe even started out with four spades with an eight-card spade suit. One thing is sure, your partner has opened above the one level to show five to nine high card points and a long suit with honors in that suit. Now you are the responder to that weak preemptive opener. The good news is most of the time you're actually gonna pass. Most of the time you simply won't have very much to offer. And as part of this conversation, the opponent on your right might bid, they might pass. It doesn't matter what the opponent does in the, in, the, in, the, in the norm. You will have your own responder rules to follow, okay? And whether the opponent on your right bids or passes, you're going to follow your rules responder, at least these foundational fundamental rules that we're introducing right now. So let's start with the beginning foundational rules for a responder. And we start with the concept of something called a big fit. What is a big fit with your preemptive opening partner or any time in bridge actually? A big fit is when you know that you and your partner, through the conversation of the auction, you have figured out you have at least 10 cards together in the same suit, right? That's not a plain old fit. That's a big fit. 10 cards together. It means the opponents have three measly little cards in that long suit that you and your partner have together. You have real power. After you take their three measly trump cards away from them during the play of the hand, you have still a lot of trump on both sides of the table. You'll be able to do all kinds of magical things. So this is simple here. When you have a 10 card or longer big fit, you bid game. It doesn't matter what your point count is. Absolutely doesn't matter. Let's say your partner opened two hearts, a two level preemptive bid with a six card heart suit, right? If your partner opens on the two level, your partner has a six card suit. Well, suppose your responding hand has four cards in that same heart suit. That's a 10 card fit. What if instead your partner opened three spades, a three level preemptive opening bid? That shows a seven card suit when they open three level. Well, your responding hand needs three cards to get to a 10 card fit. Now, if your partner opens a four level, let's say she opened four diamonds or four hearts or four spades, four clubs. Well, honestly, you're already at game going level if you're in a major suit, right? If your partner opens four hearts or four spades, we're already in a major suit and we're already in game. You're not gonna do anything. You have, and you might have a 10 card fit, but we're already at game. We're not bidding higher. If your partner suit is a minor suit, then if you had two cards to go with your partner's eight cards, when she opens four diamonds or four clubs, you're gonna bid game in a minor suit, five diamonds or five clubs. Again, you need 10 cards between you. So when you know that you and your partner have a 10 card or longer fit in bridge, it's not just with preemptive open, openings, honestly. In your second year of Ridge, we're going to talk about other times when you bid game with a 10-card fit. So when you know for sure you have a 10-card fit, you bid game. Points do not matter. You always go to game. Big fit, big game, major suit or minor suit, done. It's the end of the auction for you anyway. Okay? Big fit. Bid game, 10 card fit together, go for it. Major suit, minor suit. So what are the other things we think about as responder? What if you did not have a big fit? What if what you had was a regular old fit? Maybe you figured out that you and your partner have eight or nine cards together in a fit. Okay, it is still a fit, right? Add distribution right away. And then we're gonna break down 
the two areas that you would bid or how you would react in two different ways when your partnership has just a regular old fit, eight or nine cards together. And it starts with a big point count. If your responding hand with distribution has 16 or more high card points, I'm sorry, 16 or more points, including distribution, and you know your partnership has a regular fit, eight or nine cards together, go ahead and bid game. Now, some of you are going to say, why would 16 points be enough if partners weekend has five to nine points? Well, here's the thing. Your partner has not yet added distribution. Your partner doesn't know yet there's a fit when she opened her three, three heart her preemptive bid. She doesn't know you have one or two cards for her. And when your partner has a long suit in the preemptive opening hand, she also has at least one, honestly, probably two short suits. She must. If she has seven cards in one suit, there are only six cards remaining and they're distributed among three other suits. She might be two, two, two. Those are short suits. So your partner doesn't know there's a fit yet. You do, responder. If your partner opens three hearts, you need one or two heart cards to know you have an eight or nine card fit. And you know that your partner has not yet added distribution. Your partner's going to get one or two, sometimes three distribution points when she figures out there's a fit. So since she has not counted her distribution yet, your 16 points, including your distribution, will probably take your partnership pretty close to 25 points. And even if you're not completely at 25 points, the fact that you have this lopsided long suit in your partner's hand that's going to be the Trump suit means after she finishes pulling Trump, she's going to have a lot of Trump left in that hand. She's going to be able to Trump all of her short suits early. She's going to get more mileage out of that Trump suit, winning tricks here and there, extra tricks, okay? 16 or more points in your hand, and you know you have an eight or nine card fit, bid game in your partner's preemptive suit. Now, I'll make the next part easy for you. If you have an eight or nine card fit with your partner's preemptive opening suit, major or minor, and you have zero to 15 points, including distribution, pass. There honestly are a lot more moving parts to this. There's, there's a bunch of things we have to learn about, well, how many points do you have in zero to 15? Does it matter? Would it make a difference? There is more to talk about. But the truth is you're just not going to have all those fine points, all those little things that you have to think about most of the time. And most of the time, even if you had between zero to 15 points and you had an eight or nine card fit for your partner, you're still going to pass. It's going to feel weird. You're going to be sitting on 14 responding points thinking you should do something. No. Remember your partner opened with five to nine high card points. If you've got 14 points, you don't even have 20 points necessarily together. You don't even have half of the high card points together, perhaps. So you have to be a little more cautious. You have to put together more information and we're not ready to talk about it yet. So even if you had an eight or nine card fit with your partner's preemptive opening hand, once you add distribution, if you're zero to 15 points for now, just pass. You cannot give your partner enough help to end up in a decent scoring place. You'll end up too high. You'll get a higher than usual negative score in this scenario. Don't do it. We'll learn more in your second year of bridge. Now, we've talked about a big fit, 10 or more cards together. We've talked about a regular fit, eight or nine cards together. What if you don't have a fit at all with your partner's preemptive opening suit? No fit at all. Well, good news. Pass. Pass. Again, I know I keep saying this. There's a bunch of stuff we have to learn about weak bidding in general. And we can't learn it all at once. We simply can't. So we're going to have to spend some time taking it apart. But the truth is that most of the time, you're just not going to even have a lot of responding points, whether you have a fit or no fit. You're going to pass so much of the time normally. That that's where we're starting. So without a fit at all for your partner's preemptive opening hand, I don't care what your point count is, 
pass, pass. That's it. Those are the three things. On page five in your packet, there's a general summary about preemptive opening, the opponent overcalling, and now this information, these three areas of how a responder will bid. Now, let's see if we can put some more explanation into this by going over some of the hands in your packet. And I'm going to start with hand one from your packet. And on board one, <clears throat> you'll see up here that North is the dealer. And I've given you the high card points here. And you'll see that while North has a long heart suit, certainly has at least five cards and hearts, does not have 12 to 20 high card points. So she's not opening one heart. But before she willy nilly just passes, because she says, oh, I only have seven points, she's got to remember there are other ways to open. And one of those ways is a weak preemptive opening bid. So let's see if she meets the requirements. North, you need between five to nine high card points. Well, you have seven. You have a six card heart suit. That heart suit has at least two of the top three honors or at least three of the top five honors. I see the ace and the king. Outside of that heart suit, you do not also have a four card other major spades. Good, you should not make a preempt if you also had a four card major. Look at the other three suits other than your heart suit. Do you have an ace or a king in any of those suits? You are allowed to have one, either ace or king in one of the other three suits. You're supposed to have pretty much all of your points in your whole hand in your long suit. That's what makes that suit valuable to you as a trump suit. You can win tricks. So when you look at this hand, you see that North doesn't even have any, any honors outside of her long heart suit. And then you look at vulnerability up here. When you are not vulnerable, beautiful time to make a preempt, not vulnerable. It will impact the scoring in a better way. So North, I think you can make a preemptive opening bid in two hearts. Why the two level? Because you have a six card suit. That's where we make six card suit preemptive bids, the two level. Now the auction will move to East. East, you're the first opponent who can bid in this auction. And you're looking to see if you have a way into this auction for your partnership. Now you have eight high card points. That doesn't sound like very much, right? In order for you to make a two-level simple overcall, if you were still going to make a simple overcall on the two-level, it would have to be a five-card or longer spade suit, and it would have to be 10 to 16 high card points. Well, East, you don't have any long suits at all, and you don't even have 10 points. You do not have any kind of simple overcall. You also do not have a penalty double. First of all, penalty doubles are made when the preemptive opener bids at the four-level or higher. And then your hand east would have to have at least 15 high card points. No penalty double. You're passing. So the opponent doesn't always make a bid when you make a preemptive opener. And now the auction moves to south. South, you are the responder to north's preemptive opening bid. Now, I know we said that your responding hand will often pass, and it absolutely will. But what we want to do in this lesson is highlight the times when a responder will pass bid. Now, look at South's hand. And the, primarily, you start with your partner's long suit, hearts. When you look at South's hand and specifically at the heart suit, South, you have four heart cards. North has promised you six heart cards when she bid two hearts. That is a 10 card heart fit. Big fit. And big fit means bid game. Always no matter what point count you have. Now, South, you have a very nice point count, don't you? You have 18 high card points. Woo! You should absolutely bid game four hearts. Now, I think that North and South are not going to have a whole lot of trouble, perhaps, in making 10 tricks in four hearts. Why? Well, because South is bringing a whole lot of high card points to this hand. So that's actually pretty helpful. But I would not care if South had zero points. With a 10-card fit, you bid game. When you have a strong hand, you expect to take the 10 tricks you need. You're really bidding game because you think it will make with your 18 or longer or more points, right? 
If you had 16 or more points, you would bid gain anyway with any with a regular fit. So you're bidding gain because you have a 10 card fit. The auction will move to West, the other opponent. Well, West, you're in the same boat that East was in. What are you going to do on the four level now? You would have to bid four spades or you would have to bid five something. Well, in order to do that, you need an exceptionally long suit of your own. I mean, really long. I mean, four level preemptive long of your own. You would need a whole lot of points. You need more like South's kind of points. You don't have that. You don't even have a penalty double. Again, you would need at least 15 points West for a penalty double. You don't have that. You're passing. Now, North, we're already in four hearts. You're passing, right? And East, you didn't have anything the first time. Pass. Now, here's some good news on this hand. If you look at this deep finesse box, notice that North, who's going to play this in four hearts, North, if you look at your horizontal line, you can absolutely make four hearts. And says it says you can make five. You can take 11 tricks, book plus five. That's fantastic. That's going to be a healthy, positive score for you, isn't it? We always like positive scores, don't we? They're always good. And you're going to make a positive score, even though you had a weak preemptive opening hand, largely because you have a 10 card fit, which means you have a whole lot of trump together. But you also your partner in South has a whole lot of high card points. So that's helpful. All right. That's board one. Let's go look at board two in your packet. North is our dealer again. North. I'm looking at your hand and I'm seeing a long diamond suit. Now, you do not have 12 to 20 high card points. I noticed that here. But you do ask yourself, can I open some other way before you just willy nilly pass? You have five to nine high card points. You have a seven card diamond suit. That diamond suit has at least two of the top three honors or three of the top five honors. And I see three honors in that hand. When you look at the major suits, there is no four card major. When you look at the suits that are not the diamond suit, the other three suits, you don't have any outside honors. All of your points are in your diamond suit. Perfect. You look at vulnerability up here. It says all. That means every one of us are vulnerable. And it is perfectly okay to make a preempt if everyone is vulnerable. It's a level playing field. We're all in the same boat. So if I were North, I would make a preemptive opening bid on the three level with a seven card suit, three diamonds. Now, what you're hoping to do is stop East and West from finding their best contract. Well, East, you have an eight card, eight high card points in your hand. You do not have any way of making a simple overcall on the three level. Remember, to make a simple overcall on the three level after an opponent's preemptive opening, you need a six card suit with at least two honors in it. You need 14, 15, 16 high card points. You don't have that East. You don't even have enough points, at least 15, for a penalty double, and you would not make a penalty double on, against three diamonds. You make penalty doubles when the opponents are at the four level or higher. Therefore, what's left? Nothing. You're going to pass. South, you have a responding hand here to your partner's preemptive opener. Now, your partner opened a minor suit, but that doesn't change your rules. You're looking for a seven, uh, excuse me, a 10 card or longer fit. So when your partner pro opened three diamonds, she was promising seven cards. You have four cards in diamonds. South, you have an 11 card fit. Holy cow, big fit. I don't care how many points you have. South, big fit bid game, even in minor suits, and that's five diamonds. Now, are you going to make five diamonds? Well, you know what? Take a look at South's hand. South has 17 high card points and some distribution points. I'm thinking it might be helpful. I'll bet this hand can make five diamonds. And in fact, it'll tell you on the deep finesse that it probably will. You might have to make sure you play all your suits correctly, and you're going to have to push out the ace of clubs very early. After you pull the diamond trump away from the opponents, play clubs so you can get that ace of clubs out of the way early, and that'll get you some club tricks. All right? Now, when we come to West, West, look at you only have nine high card points. What are you going to do it when the opponents are already at five diamonds? You don't have 15 points to make a penalty double. Just pass. North is going to pass because we're already at game. And North is going to play this in five diamonds. And I think it's really possible that as long as you make your first task to pull the trump, the diamond trump from the opponents, it'll only take you one round. 
You play the king of clubs and make them play the ace. They're going to play a suit back to you in some way. Okay. And you can probably win 11 tricks. You probably have to give them the ace of hearts, but then you're going to start trumping that suit and you have to give them the ace of clubs. And then you're going to have winners in that suit and you have a winners already in spades. I think five diamonds might be, might happen here. All right. But the, but you're helping your preemptive partner self with your big fit, even in a minor suit. Let's look at, an, at another hand. All right. Let's go look at board three. Now, board three, North is our dealer. Five card or longer major, but not 12 to 20 points. You meet all of the requirements to make a preemptive opening bid. It is okay. You should preempt when you're not vulnerable. East and West are the vulnerable ones. North and South are not. Preempt when you're not vulnerable. You have a six card suit. And you should, I'm sorry, this says seven, but it should say six. It should say six. You have a six card spade suit and you should make a preemptive opening bid on the two level with a six card suit. Two spades, two spades. East, well, you have eight lousy points. Just like the two hands before this, you did not have a bid. You don't have an overcall on the three level. You would need 14 to 16 points in a six card suit. Because North did not open on the four level, you wouldn't even have a penalty double. Even if you had 15 points, you don't have it. You have nothing. Pass. South, let's come to your responding hand. Your partner's promising you six spade cards. You have four of them. That gives you a big fit. Big fit. Bid game. Take a look at your point count, South. You only have seven points. That's scary, right? You already know North has five to nine points. You only have seven points. Should you really still bid game for spades? Really? I would. I absolutely would bid four spades. A big fit means you bid game, and it's a strategic move. In the previous hands, remember that our responder had a whole lot of points, and we kind of expected to make our contract because of those points in addition to the big fit. But now, when South has so few points, I'm no longer expecting to make four spades. If North and South both have weak-ish points, who has all the points? In fact, if you look at East and West and you look at their point count, they have 25 points just in high card points without even looking for distribution. And we have a 10 card fit. The opponents are gonna have their own long suit, either their own nine or 10 card fit, or they very often will have more than one eight card fit. And in fact, East has an eight card heart suit an eight card club suit and a seven card diamond suit. They have length in the other three suits. They absolutely will find a good contract to go with their 25 points. If you look down here in the deep finesse, look at the East West line. It's already saying they can take 12 tricks in a contract, making six book plus six is 12 tricks. That would be a huge, huge positive score if East and West could find their heart fit. They would hand you North and South, a huge negative score. You are bidding game, South, because of your big fit. Points don't matter. You are shutting down the opponents. Particularly right now, you're going to shut out West from trying to figure out how to bid. Because when we get to West Sand, take a look at West's high card points, 17 of them. West is peeved. What is West going to bid here? West would have to take a leap of faith. West would have to bid, I don't know, five hearts with only four heart cards. There's absolutely no guarantee. I mean, none. That East has four heart cards to go with West. I mean, she happens to on this hand, but I could easily have shown you hands where she would have a double tenant hearts and a really long something else like long diamonds. How is West going to guess the right way to go? If she guesses badly, she's going to be in the position of getting a huge negative score. So rather than guessing wildly and getting a negative score like minus 800 points, how about West does something a little more comfortable for the partnership? If I were West with 15 or more high card points and West has 17, West has to be saying to himself, they cannot take 10 tricks and four spades if I'm sitting on 17 out of 40 high card points. And so if I'm West, I'm going to make a penalty double. I'm going to double them for penalty. 
I don't think they can take 10 tricks. I think they're fooling us. And I think West is right. Because if you look at the deep finesse, you can see that actually West, um, North, you're supposed to take 10 tricks. You can only take seven. You're going to be down three. But I will tell you this, and this is on, uh, when you look at the answer sheet for board three in your packet, if North does go down three, doubled, not vulnerable. North is not vulnerable. You know what score North is going to earn for being down three, doubled, and not vulnerable? It will be minus um, 500 points, minus 500. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But if North and South, specifically South, if South did not jump to four spades with the big fit, West would find a way into this auction. East and West are going to find four hearts together. They are. They're going to make 12 tricks. They're going to make six. That score for East and West, vulnerable, four hearts making six, is a positive 680 points. They will hand North and South negative 680 points. So North and South, it is so much better for you to have bid four spades with your big fit, go down three and earn a negative 500 rather than let East and West find four hearts and hand you a negative 680 points. The closer you are to zero, the better off you are. And even though minus 500 sounds like a lot, it's a better score than minus 680. So take a look at the, some of the answer information in your packet about the scoring on each of these boards. I've gone into some detail on it, all right? Everybody else is gonna pass here. And yes, South is gonna play it in four spades double, down three for minus 500. It's actually still a good score. Let's go to board five in your packet. On board five, you can see that North is our dealer. North again has a low point count, even though she has a six card heart suit not a regular one heart opener with five to nine high card points with a six card heart suit with high honors in it no outside four card major no outside aces or kings you are not vulnerable north east and west are vulnerable north is not preempt when you're not vulnerable with a six card suit the level at which you're going to preempt those hearts is the two level two hearts okay then the auction moves to East, the opponent. East, you're sitting on seven high card points. That's just not very much at all. You have no business bidding anything. You would need a five card spade suit and 10 to 16 points to make an overcall at two spades. You would need six cards and 14 to 16 points to make an overcall at three spades. You don't have a bid East, pass. Then we come to South's responding hand. Now South, you have to think about what did your partner tell you? Your partner with a two heart preemptive opening bid is showing you a six card heart suit. You South have two heart cards. That means you have a regular old eight or nine card heart fit. Okay, it's still a fit. You do try and add distribution, but you don't add anything for a heart doubleton. That's gonna be the trump suit. Don't add anything for short trump suits. So what are you gonna do here? You have 16 total points. Remember, if you look under the category of regular fit, another time that you jump all the way to game, in addition to if you had a 10 card fit, is if you have a regular fit, but 16 or more points, including any distribution. You bid game as well at that point. So that's what South should absolutely do. Why? Why should South jump to four hearts? Look. You know you've got a heart fit, and you know that North has at six heart cards in her hand when she opened two hearts. That means that North must have at least one short suit. She only has seven cards remaining distributed among three other suits. She must have at least one short suit. And that short suit has not yet been counted for distribution. Honestly, once North knows there's a fit and does that, it often gets the partnership up to 25 points-ish if South has at least 16 points. So when a responder has at least 16 points, even with just a regular fit, South should go to game, should go to four hearts. 
So if I were south, I would bid four hearts right now. West, we're going to come to you. You have 10 high card points. Well, what are you going to do as the opponent here? Not enough to make a penalty double. You would need 15 points to penalty double four hearts. So you're passing. North is going to pass. We're already in game. East, you're going to pass. We play in four hearts. We did not have any interference from the opponents. Do you think you can make four hearts on this contract, North? Well, let's look over here. I see that you can. I think you can take absolutely 10 tricks on this hand. You can. The club suit is going to break for you, 3-3, three, three, which means even the six of clubs is going to be a winner. You're going to get four club winners. You're going to get at least, you're going to get two diamond winners, right? You're going to have to give up the, to the ace of spades, uh, ace of hearts, but then you get five heart winners. And if, and this is the, what you should do early, as soon as you win the first trick and you pull the trump, you need to start playing the spade suit. It's longish. It's seven cards. It doesn't have the highest cards in it, but you got to play two rounds of spades and lose two spade tricks. And then you're going to have spade winners down here, even though they're small cards. Hard to consider, right? I know. But you can make four on this hand if you are a little bit thoughtful about it. That's a good positive score for you. Yay. All right. Let's go look at board six. North has a six card heart suit again, meets all the requirements to make a preemptive opening, including vulnerability. Nobody's vulnerable. With a six card heart suit, North, you should open two hearts. East, now you have a little more in your high card point area, right? You have 12 high card points. So a couple of things to consider. If you had a five card spade suit, you could make a simple overcall still on the two level. You would need five or more spades, 10 to 16 high card points. Well, you do have at least 10 to 16 high card points, but you don't have five spades. In fact, you don't have length in any suit. So you're not making a simple overcall. You're not making a penalty double. You would need 15 points to make a penalty double. Otherwise, it could go very badly for you. So even though you have 12 points, you don't have an overcall bid. You pass. Then we come to South's responding hand. Now, South. You know that your partner North has six heart cards. You have a heart singleton. Ugh. You don't have a fit with North's preemptive opening hand, do you? Are you going to bid something else? Absolutely not. This comes under the category of no fit with partner's preemptive suit. With no fit, you should pass. Anything you do will push the auction higher you and your partner will have to take even more tricks just to hold your head above water, just to be successful or get a small negative score. If you start bidding, you're going to confuse North. North will start bidding. The two of you are going to bid back and forth, bouncing all over the place. You're going to end up way too high and get a huge negative score. Just leave North alone. You don't have a hard fit. I know you're frightened, but it's not your job to rescue your partner. Your partner's already a low-level bidder at the two level. Don't make it harder by pushing the auction up. South should pass without a fit of any kind with the preemptive opening hand. Now, the auction then goes to West. West, you have 12 high card points. Boy, it sure feels like you should be making some kind of bid, right, opponent? But again, you would need a five-card suit specifically five spade cards if you wanted to bid two spades. If you were going to bid clubs or diamonds, you'd have to do it on the three level. And a three level simple overcall requires 14 to 16 high card points and a six card suit. You don't have that. You don't have a penalty double without 15 points. You're going to have to pass. Bummer, right? Bummer. Now, North is going to play in two hearts. North. It says here you could probably make two hearts. Can you? Well, you're probably going to have to lose uh, one trick to the king of hearts, but then you probably take five heart winners. You have the ace of diamonds. You have the king, queen, 10, 9, 8 of spades. If you push the ace out, you're going to have a decent chance of taking even two spades if you keep plugging spades. So if you could take two spade tricks, and you could take five heart tricks, that's seven tricks. And then you take the ace of diamonds, there's your eight tricks. Yes, it's going to take some careful play. 
but you could end up with a positive score. If you ended up with a negative score, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Because if you look at East and West Sand, they have 24 high card points between them. Now, they don't have a major suit fit, but it does say they could make two no Trump. And if they found their way to two no Trump, they would earn a positive 120 points. They would hand North and South a negative 120 points. If North does go down one and two hearts, it's negative 50. It's still a better score, even if it's negative 50. Don't let East West into the auction. That's the whole point of making a preempt. So if you have some questions, I want you to jot them down. Feel free to send them to me even before class. We'll see each other in class and we'll do our best to try and put these specific responding rules in place. We're not going to do all the what ifs. The what ifs will start stumbling into in your second year of bridge. Yes, there's more. Of course, there's more. But it's best that we get foundational information down first with the big fit and the regular fit and the no fit. Okay? I will see you soon. Take care.